Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, I know I said that I uh, really wasn't going to get back into videos just yet, but I had a comment. Someone made a comment in one of my videos, and they were totally screwing up repentance, what repentance is, and come to find out that person was part of the faith alone crowd, and he did something very interesting. I quoted 1 Corinthians 15. Let's go there real quick. Hmm, my brain's not. 1 Corinthians. Oh, that's 2 Corinthians. Somehow I got 2 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He linked 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. He skipped 1 and 2. Why is that? Well, what does verse 2 say? We'll read the whole thing. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, the gospel which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if, because the faith alone people don't like the if part, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. He left that two verses out. I quoted 1, 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. He just put 3 and 4. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now, when I was, I was telling myself I made... Intro videos, am I ready to start doing videos again? I did some intro videos, nah, delete them. And I came across this guy and he's just, it just seemed like he was hitting a lot of things I was doing in the study that I've been doing for the past few months. And it just really hit my heart. And I'm like, okay, let's get out there, let's, let's, let's get out there, let's start preaching the Word of God. Um, you drop your cross, you deny yourself, you pick up your cross daily, and then you follow Jesus Christ. Get back to where you left off with Jesus Christ. He's, he's picked you back up, he's put the pieces together. Let's get back to doing Bible studies. So, hopefully you guys are interested in doing some Bible studies. So this, this study, that's going to be pretty interesting, I'm calling it the Three Salvations. Did you realize that there are three salvations in the life of a Christian? Well, the first salvation should be obvious, okay? Salvation for lost sinners. That salvation, one thing we need to get across real quick, is salvation in the King James Bible, God's perfect written word, salvation has always been God saving man through His grace. Okay? You cannot save yourself. So let's get that down real quick, what salvation means, what salvation is. There's three salvations we're going to be talking about. Salvation in this dispensation from the death of Jesus Christ to the catching away of the body of Christ, that's what we're going to be talking about, the three salvation that's going to happen in this dispensation. Okay, God's grace. If you go to Genesis 19... No, Genesis 6, verse 8, this is the Old Testament. I just wanted to prove that even in the Old Testament, God was saving man by His grace. It says, But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. God saved Noah from the flood, not because he was perfect, not because he was so great and he deserved to be saved. God had grace on him. He was a righteous man. His heart was perfect before the Lord. He had a heart for the Lord and did his best to obey the Lord. Um, also, there's a story about Lot. Let's see if I wrote this one down. Yeah, Lot was telling him, if I had found grace in thy sight, when the angel of the Lord, I believe it was Jesus, telling him, hey, go to the mountains. He's like, no, I want to go to the city instead. And if I had found grace in thy sight, and he talks about God saving him, God had grace for Lot. He had a perfect heart with the Lord. He was a perfect, sinless man. He made mistakes. But he had a perfect heart, and God's grace is what saved him. He didn't save himself. He didn't have all. He was just so perfect, he deserved to be saved. So what's God's grace today? Okay, Ephesians 2.1. 
We're going to read this all the way through. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin, where in times past ye walked according to the course of this world, times past, according to the prince of the power of the air. When you're lost, Satan can use you. Okay. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But one time we were lost just like everyone else. But God, who is rich in his mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. There's the grace and hath raised us up together and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the age to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us. Okay, that will be on the second one, and the third one, and of course the first one. So grace is all there, but it's kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The faith alone people like to switch that around and say, no, you're saved by your faith through God's grace. No, you're saved by God's grace. And here's the next part. For we are his workmanship, verse 10, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay? The first salvation that we're going to be talking about, and I'm going to be breaking it up into pieces because I want to start going through things Almost like a fine, not really with the fine tube, comb brush, but um, I want to go through things. So the first salvation for lost sinner, what's that salvation? What are we being saved from? What's God's grace saving us from? Hell. So the first video that I'm going to break up into multiple parts is going to be about the plan of salvation. And it's for a lost person. We were all lost at one point, but now we are saved by God's grace. And it's through Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, we're going to be talking about repentance and going through it. The three stages of how they get rid of repentance. What repentance really is. That, and it's just really in depth. Because believe it or not, there's two types of repentance. One repentance is going to lead you to hell. One repentance is going to lead you to heaven. God's grace. God's saving you. So we're going to go through that. We're going to go through the belief in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. We're going to talk about actually what happened to Jesus Christ, why it had to happen that way. Like I said, this is more an in-depth study for saved sinners. And as we go through it, it's also for professing Christians to say that might be lost to say, hey, did I really do all this? Did I really understand this? Or did I just say some prayer when they were playing some music in some Babel building? Okay. And then we're going to go through the prayer uh, that leads to salvation. So we're going to go through all of it and show these things, how people in the Old Testament were calling out to God to save them. Uh, when you say, when you take repentance out, you don't get saved. God will not save you when you take repentance out as, a, as leading to salvation, finding God's grace. God will not save you if you're too self-righteous to ask God to save you. Asking God to save you means you don't deserve it. So I'm going to break three. the first part, Salvation of Lost Sinners. We're going to break it down into three videos. And we're really going to go through a lot of scripture and God showed me a lot of interesting things. The second salvation was the main purpose of me doing this. I realized, actually there's, God said, you know what, there's three salvations, not just this one. The second salvation is in the life of a saved sinner. Okay, the Bible says, and you know what, let's see if I can find it. I want to get the verse. I didn't write it down. It's always good to hunt some verses down. So, let's see. See, Philippians 2.12, this is what really hit me with what I've been through recently. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye, as ye have also obey, always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So, address to save sinners. 
Salvation in this life, how can you, you can either have a life that has a lot of joy in it, a lot of peace, you're going to have a hard life, don't get me wrong. The way the lost world is going to treat you, you're going to lose friends when you get saved. The family is going to turn against you. You're going to be vexed by this world. You're going to be struggling with the flesh. But there are things that you can do to destroy your life as a Christian. And to make your life just terrible. You're like going through terror like I did recently. Um, just horrible and miserable. And you're given to fear when we're not given a spirit of fear. But you... Like I said, we're going to go through all of it. I don't want to get into depth here. It'll take forever because that's why we have another video for it. But salvation, the life of a sinner. What's your life going to be like here on earth? It's not your best life now. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you can be saved from a lot of trouble in this life. You can learn from the mistakes of others. You can learn from my mistakes. But we're going to go through and talk about it. We're going to talk about sanctification. We're going to talk about false converts. Okay, we're going to talk about wolves in sheep's clothing. We're going to talk about a lot of things that have to do with what really makes your life miserable as a Christian. Okay, a lot of times you'll find that when your life is falling apart, it's because of you. It's not because of the lost world. It's not because of the vexation. It's because of your flesh, and you're not using standing. You're compromising. And you're letting false converts, wolves in sheep's clothing, deceive you. False converts come into your life and they can really mess up your life. You have to let them, but still they can mess up your life. So there's the second salvation. Salvation in this life as a, as a sinner, saved sinner, as a Christian. And here's our favorite salvation, salvation three. They're all my favorite. But the one that we are all looking forward to is the blessed hope. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Falsely called the Great Tribulation. Okay? There's two things God will be saving us from, and we're going to go through it together. The first thing He's saving you from is your flesh. You are two-thirds redeemed. Your soul is redeemed, as we just read in Ephesians. Um, right there it says... For by grace are you saved, and hath raised us up together, in Ephesians 2, and made us sit together in heavenly places. Your soul is in heaven as well as right here. Your soul is redeemed when you get saved. Your spirit is redeemed when you get saved. Your body isn't. They say you're two-thirds redeemed. When the catching of the way of the body of Christ happens, we are going to be saved from this body of flesh. All this temptation, we don't have to deal with temptation anymore. This flesh telling us, oh, come on, you can do that, or come on, you can do that, and trying to just push us to do what we know is wrong, and we go against God's Word. God's Word is what helps us keep it down. That will be part of the changed life, the sanctification, and salvation too. We'll talk about how God sanctifies and cleans up a person's life. There's a lot to these studies, so it's going to be a multiple part that's going to go out over time, and hopefully you guys are in, into Bible studies. <laughs> And we'll get really into it. But the first thing we get saved from is our flesh. The second thing we get saved from is the wicked world. The vexation of this wicked world. We get saved from the lost people. The people that you're always fighting because they don't want to hear truth. The worst thing about being a Christian is you have the truth. God has given us the truth. The King James Bible, perfect written word of God in English. He's given us the truth, and nobody wants to hear it. And you get so vexed by this world and how sinful and wicked it's getting, and God's like, okay, I'm also tired of it. Come on home. It's time for the, it's time, for the time of Jacob's trouble to start. God pours out his wrath on the earth. Um, so you're going to get saved from, and he's going to sort out and weed out the false converts from the real, truly saved Christians. Okay? There's so a lot that goes on in that salvation. Two parts, but the second part about false converts being weeded out, um, not having to deal with all these false religions, people making Christians look bad and misrepresenting what a Bible-believing, God-fearing man and woman are, true Christians. God's going to save us from that, and He's going to pull us out of here. So it's God's grace that does it. 
And each one of these, your salvation, there's plenty of times in your life, the second salvation we talked about, salvation in the life of a Christian, a saved sinner. There's a lot of times in your life that you're going to be on your knees crying and thanking the Lord for His grace, for showing you grace, for showing you mercy when you didn't deserve it. There's still a lot of times that I go back to salvation for lost sinners when God saved me, and I still thank God with all my heart for saving me, for His grace. But His grace is God's salvation has always been God saving man through His grace. So, we're going to get into the next, the first video of the study, Salvation for Lost Sinners, and it's going to be three parts. Okay? So everybody wonders, like, it just stopped. No, there's going to be three parts to this first study. It's going to be a lot of uh, videos and a lot of, like, a big series. Okay. Repentance. Uh, belief in the finished work of Jesus on the cross. What Jesus went through. Why he had to go through it. Why it had to happen the way it happened. If there's a lot of interesting stuff that God showed me through other people that did the study. Okay. And then prayer. Why prayer is, leads to salvation. It's part of the plan of salvation. Why it's so important. People did it in the past. People do it in the present. People are going to be doing it in the future. Okay? In the time of Jacob's trouble, they're going to be praying for God's mercy. But if you miss the catching away of the body of Christ, uh, surviving that time period is next to impossible if you get saved. And you can lose your salvation in that time period. So, I'm rambling on a little bit, but those are the three salvations. Hopefully you guys will be excited, and like I said, I, I need you to have your King James Bible ready. We're going to go through scripture after scripture, and we're going to be talk, I'm going to be talking about some of my experiences, some recent, some of my past, and I know that in the comment section, feel free to throw your experiences in your past, that what you went through, having to deal with people. You know, that don't want to follow the true plan of salvation. Salvation is life. Times where you just totally destroyed your life and God had to pick you back up and uh, put the pieces back together. I want to throw this in because this makes a big point of salvation in the life of a, of a, a saved sinner, a Christian. How many of you guys remember the poem Footprints? I used to have so much paraphernalia, <laughs> if you want to say it like that. I mean, all kinds of stuff. Little notebooks, papers, plaques about uh, footprints. The poem, Footprints. Well, after I got truly saved, I started looking and studying the Bible and realized uh, the, the poem, Footprints, has it backwards. It's actually satanic. It teaches falsely. It's got it backwards. It shows that there are two footprints as you're going with your walk with the Lord. And then it goes to one footprint, set of footprints. Then it goes back to two. And the whole poem is talking about, well, when that one footprint was there, you left me, Lord. That was the hardest times in my life. You left me, Lord. Uh, and they say, well, that's when I carried you. Here's the thing, brothers and sisters in Christ. Here's the way the Bible, the King James Bible teaches it. There's one path at the beginning. You get saved, there's one path, or one set of footprints. Then it goes into two sets of footprints, and then it goes back to one set of footprints. What does that mean? The Bible teaches that God carries you. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Jesus is carrying you from day one that you get saved, and the only time He's not carrying you is, and He's not going to leave you, there's still two footprints, He's still going to be there, but he, God's sometimes going to be like, is that what you want? I've told you no. I've given you the word. You know you're not supposed to do this. Okay, you want it? Fine. He's going to step back, watch you fall flat on your face. And then when you drop your pride, and you go, okay, I shouldn't have done that. And that whole verse about denying yourself, picking up your cross daily, and following Jesus. That's what that's about. That's what that salvation and life of the sinner is about. You can fall on your face very little, or you can fall flat on your face a lot. And that's what we're going to be going through. So, that's, uh, go ahead and wrap this intro up. I'm excited. I'm, I really want to do a good study and you know, start fellowshipping again with the brethren. So, I love my brothers and sisters in Christ. Grace and peace be with you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you in the first part of the video.
the first set of videos.